Welcome to Upturned Table. This time we're playing the Dragon Bane uh, Quick Start from the Kickstarter. We have returning players this week, so both uh, Matt and Will are returning. Hello, guys. Hello. Hello, hello. And a new player uh, this session, Andre. Hello, Andre. Hi there. I guess we'll start with a little bit of background on Dragon Bane. So Dragon Bane is the uh, kind of newest uh, edition of Dragons and Demons, and it's being published by Free League, and this is the first time it's ever appeared in English. So the rule set is going to be a little bit Free League, a little bit 5e, and a little bit uh, basic roleplay. So we're going to be rolling under on our d20s. And the setting itself is the forces that balance the world in this setting are uh, dragons, which are the force of order, and demons, which are the forces of chaos. But these kingdoms that have worshipped uh, both demons and dragons are, are over with, are kind of fallen. There are there's still remnants and artifacts of these, these previous great kingdoms, but we are adventurers that are going to be digging through uh, what remains. We've got three players uh, with us today, and uh, we'll have a couple of NPCs that may or may not stick with us. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. Why don't we just go through and introduce our character? So why don't we start with uh, Will? So Will, who are you playing from the uh, the pre-generated character? I'm playing Archmaster uh, Duhan, I think is how we've decided his name was pronounced. Nice. He's a elderly... Yet spry, wizard, slash sorcerer, I guess, is actually what they call him in this one. Likes burning things and uh, knocking stuff over with rocks, it seems like. <laughs> right, that's right. So, elementalist, yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. And how about Matt? Who did you choose? I am playing Mackander of Half Bay, uh, of the Mallard kin. So, basically, an anthropomorphic duck. Uh, he is strong, sturdy, and stubborn, with a waddling walk. And quick to anger when provoked. So there may be some Daffy Duck outbursts at some point. And how about uh, Andre? Who did you choose? Oh, I chose Orla Moonsilver, the uh, elven hunter. She seems to have revenge on her mind. Uh, hmm. Wants to slay some minions of darkness and avenge her murdered family. So she's she's got some work to do. All right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Your motivation. The name of the adventure in the uh, the quick start for Dragonbane is called Rittermount, and so a little bit of uh, uh, background on the setting. Deep in the vast forests of the Mist Valley lays a burial mound called the Rittermount. It is a feared place haunted by the undead form of a powerful knight in the Dragon Emperor's service. But the Death Knight is also watching over hidden treasures. Oh. So our characters find themselves Several days away from the Rittermount, you meet a wolfkin. And this wolfkin tells you this story of the Rittermount for a, a small fee. He offers to guide you to its location where he says that there is an object of great value. Baston Bloodjaw is the, uh, the wolfkin. He tells you, uh, I can see that uh, you may be seeking some, uh, some fortune and glory yourselves, and I know of a very valuable crown. It is located in a, in a place called the Rudermount. Uh, it is several days, uh, several days' travel from here, but I, for a very small fee, will, will guide you. With my friend here, uh, we may even be able to, uh, to help you gain access to this site. It is, of course, a, uh, a burial mound for a, uh, a very distinguished uh, knight that used to serve the, the Dragon Emperor. And uh, that is basically all I know, but I, I am very familiar with uh, the legends of the Great Crown located within this mount. Hmm. Crown, you say? The Wolfkin himself is a is quite tall, formidable looking uh, anthropomorphic wolf and carries a, uh, a long spear with him. And his companion is a, a female halfling. You haven't seen them speak to each other, but they do gesture back and forth with hand signals. Hand signals? Will we set off for this Ritter Mound? Any questions along the way? Yes, uh, let's go, I suppose. I'll walk over to the Wolfkin's kneecap. <laughs> yes. And hold up a handful of silver. Okay. Try, try to look disdainful like I'm paying a peasant, <laughs> even though he's like towering over me. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, much appreciated, uh, Sir Duck. So that will be, uh, the fee is one silver for each of you. And uh, if you would like the uh, the services of my friend here, my, my halfling thief, that will be a, an additional two silver. 
Well, it's uh, not a very good thief if he needs to be handed money, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you set off. It's a, a difficult journey through the uh, the woods of the Misty Vale. During your travels, what you do notice is that the halfling kind of comes and goes, kind of disappears. So she appears to be scouting. This helps to uh, guide you and makes your trip to the, the location uh, very uneventful. So you've avoided difficulties because of her scouting. She seems to just go and returns and gestures with a series of hand signals to Baston. Do we ever hear her talk? No, you don't. She she hasn't she hasn't spoken. During the travel while she's gone, I'm going to try to ask the the wizard, uh, do you understand their method of communication? I'm not sure how much of it's just for show and how much of it's real communication. No. Okay. None of it. Is it like the stereotypical like, you know, point at your eyes and then point away and then show a two or you know, I mean, is it is it real simple yeah it's very simple it doesn't look very complicated you most of the gestures you could probably guess that the types of things that uh that she's talking about if you want to try a a learning role if any of you have decent learning (laughs) wizard (laughs) well i guess now that you brought it up i'll think more on it so give us a uh a d20 and you're trying to roll under a uh, 14 oh my well it turns out i do understand (laughs) wow excellent so you, you have complete comprehension of uh, what's going on between them. And it, it's not a complicated language. And, and there's some formalized kind of thief gestures and things. So you know that she must be associated with some some thieves guild. Because the only thing that's not general hand gestures would correspond to a uh, thief. That, so that's a dragon. So yeah, you rolled a, uh, a critical <laughs> <laughs> critical success, with an, which in this game is known as a dragon. So you have the choice of it working faster or better or in a more impressive way than impossible. So I guess just... I, I like the idea that like by watching it, I've learned that she probably belongs to an actual thieves guild instead of just being a halfling. So I think that's, to me, that's like what I gathered is that there's more to it than like as the, I learned more than I thought I was going to, right? Yes. Thinking about it. Yeah. I'll inform McCander, I believe your name was, mm-hmm. the gentleman I've been traveling with for a while. You can tell me, sir. Sir Half Bay? No, wait, that's not your last name. Sir McCander? I'll let him know that, yes, we, but we do have, it looks like, a true thief with us. So maybe her her asking, you know, for us having to hand the silver is just so she could see which, where your purse was at so she could steal it easier. Watch yourself. All right, well, with this news, I'm going to do my best to tuck my coin purse inside my breastplate. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Has Orla had any uh, reaction uh, to the goings-on during the travels? Orla is naturally suspicious and knowing that there's a thief uh, around would probably raise that suspicion but I, I i can't decide if it's better to trust the thief you have to pay or or or, or not <laughs> <laughs> so i'm struggling she's struggling with that thought if a thief can make a friend with a wolf maybe 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 they're deserving of uh, of a little trust Oh, good. But yeah, I, th- I think at some point, because we're doing this for, what, like a few days, right, of travel? Yeah, it says several days in the adventure. So, yeah, it's it's probably just sort of a week travel to this I location. I think at, at some point when they're off doing their thing, I'll bring up the fact that they didn't ask that much money to come here. Like, I'm basically bringing it up to, to McCander and Orla and be like, I mean, I was excited about the crown. I wasn't really worried about it, but it seems like they're more competent and capable than we imagined. I don't know why they would want to just pick up some randos off the street. Mm. Uh, there may be more going on here than we first imagined. So keep an eye out. Keep an eye out. I'm doing the eye gesture thing. You know, like point at my eyes and point at them. Mm-hmm. You watch them. I'm going to just keep ho- holding up my fingers in different ways. Like, okay, what, is this, what does this one mean? What does <laughs> well, this that, one mean? That means number one. <laughs> that means that's still number one. You're just using a different finger. That one's offensive. <laughs> Uh, okay, if it goes bad, set the wolf on fire. I've already done the math. <laughs> <laughs> and also from their gesturing, there's a, a kind of a simple phonetic alphabet that they're uh, using. And so you know that the thief's name is uh, Chrisana. He's addressed to it by name. Yeah, there's your, your critical. You got a lot Ooh. for that. After after your days of travel and, and suspicion <laughs> and interpreting of uh, hand gestures... You arrive at the location, so the mound itself is a hill. Baston leads you to a hill crowned with tall standing stones that are a ring around a glade in the middle of the forest. So the hilltop is uh, strangely quiet, and as you top the hill and kind of enter the ring of the standing stones, you notice a faint but ominous odor, kind of a putrid stench that uh, smells something like rotten vegetables. Mm. 
Mikander, did you leave your flask open? <laughs> no. Mikander's going to kind of walk the perimeter, take advantage of being on top of a hill to just sort of see the surroundings. Oh, nice. Okay. I'm going to take a look at these standing stones. Are they, do they have any marks or anything on them? The stones themselves are uh, just rough hewn, uh, square shaped, just embedded at the earth uh, at the top of the hill. And in the center, there is a two by two meter stone slab. The slabs themselves look very ancient, you know, very worn. So if there were markings on them at one time, they've long worn away in the wind okay. and, and weather. Baston uh, points to the uh, the slab at the center and says, we have arrived. This, of course, is the entrance to the Riddermont. And he uh, bends over and uh, inspects it a bit and his, and points out to you, uh, it looks like uh, someone else has uh, been here before us. Do you see this uh, this slab itself? It's uh, it's off its original position. Do you see this uh, this uh, slight slight gap here? It looks like something has uh, moved aside the, the slab and there's just a, a small gap, uh, not big enough for uh, maybe anybody but the halfling to get through. Hmm. And if you want to roll, uh, how about um, if McCander looking around, if you want to roll Vival or or just Spot Hidden, I guess Spot Hidden would be good too. Ooh, I am not good at that. Here we go. That is a nope. So basically in your observation, you notice that there are footprints along the uh, the hill from whoever the previous uh, visitors were. Several footprints on the side of the hill, but nothing beyond that. I'm going to make a real noisy plate mail crouch and then gesture for Orla to come over and try to show Orla the footprints. All right. Nice. And yeah, and Orla, if you want to roll survival, you may be able to tell. All right. Let's shot here. What do you know? Woo! That's how you play over there, folks. <laughs> I noticed the wizard left his one hanging like a trophy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow. that's not, that's not, I'm, I'm rolling additional dice. I'm not moving that one. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So a, uh, a dragon has been rolled for the uh, uh, survival check. So as uh, McCander has uh, gestured to the footprints uh, that he's noticed in the, uh, the grass, Orla immediately recognizes what the foul stench, what the source of this uh, ominous stench on this hillside is. There are both uh, wolf droppings and goblin excrement that uh, are littered around the ring, causing that strange rotting smell. And from the size, obviously from the size of the uh, indentations in the grass, uh, uh, it's unmistakably goblins, uh, both with wolves and uh, uh, and walking. So that seems to be who who preceded you. The amount that the slab was moved would be the the perfect amount of uh, uh, space that a goblin would need to descend into the mound. Do they ride like normal wolves, or is it crazy dire wolves? Or yeah, I think it would be like a, a little bit larger scale wolf. So probably something like a a dire wolf. It looks like uh, there isn't anything recent there isn't anything uh that recent as far as uh, so there's there's no recent droppings from wolves or anything so the only thing that you really see and uh probably the m most of the excrement is goblin so just on foot do we have a like a really rough idea of numbers are we talking about two or 20 or 100 <laughs> a party of double your size so probably about 10 goblins so from the number of um mm. Uh, number of footprints and uh, the the, uh, the amount of uh, excrement surrounding the place. Yeah, it looks like you you uh, there was a party, a previous uh, tomb raiding party of uh, about ten goblins. Does it look like they left, or does it look like they went in and they haven't come out yet? There isn't much uh, as far as uh, leaving. There's there's much more. So it looks like about ten entered, but uh, very very few. There is only a few tracks that actually left. Hmm. Oh, maybe they all died in there. McCander's going to walk over to the the small opening and look at the wolfkin and say, Okay, time to earn your money. Move these <laughs> move these blocks. <laughs> All right. Of course, uh, I, I only I only live to serve you, Sir Duck. <laughs> he says right. sarcastically. You better so say he, that. he he uh, sticks the uh, the shaft of his spear into the stone slab and, and pries it away, like uh, completely uh, freeing the the two by two meter opening at the top of the uh, at the top of the, uh, the mound and so with uh, my services rendered I will uh, bid you farewell and adieu so um and uh, so will you be uh, retaining the services of my uh, halfling friend here I'll look over at Orla and the archmaster and <laughs> try to get a read on their opinion <laughs> so originally he has said like it was two silver to keep her is that what he said if you if you'd like to keep her I'll take two silver out and put it in one hand 
mm-hmm. and then kind of doing like the like a scales back and forth with the two silver in my hand at McCander to kind of like throw it back on him if he needs if he wants to make the decision since he's doing all okay. the talking right now. I'm gonna <laughs> hold out my little gauntleted hand to the wizard for the silver. Okay, Can okay. You give it to me. Yeah, I'll hand it to you. And I look at the halfling and I'll point in the hole and I'll throw the coins in the hole. <laughs> so you get a look that you probably haven't seen since your uh your uh, (laughs) ex-wife ex-wife left you from the from we don't um, talk about that (laughs) from chrisana as she uh starts to open her pack and she removes a uh, a length of rope and also a torch, and she uh, gets some flint and, and tinder and begins to uh, oh, that's good. light a, not have a, a rope. torch. <laughs> <laughs> lucky, lucky. And so, uh, best on bows. He uh, then uh, proceeds to uh, head back to uh, head back down the hill towards the, the way that you came. Kander's gonna watch him leave, make sure he's not like circling or doubling back. Or... And he seems to be just leaving back down the hill for the return trip. Okay. So yeah, he disappears into the tree line. Krasana has the torch lit and has uh, spiked and secured a, a rope to the edge of the um, edge of the opening for the mound, gesturing that she's about to descend and waiting for uh, if, if there's any other instructions. I'll give her the hand sign for like, go be careful if I can figure out how that works. Yeah, you would be able to. Yeah, I think you have a good, good comprehension. So you can easily, e- easily communicate with her. And so she signals you uh, affirmative and uh, begins to descend. As soon as she drops below low enough that like, she probably can't hear us anymore. I'm going to go back over to McCander. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm trying to do old man voice. I'm not very good at it. <laughs> I think I'll do the talking with her from now on. We don't want her to abandon us once we're down there. You've established your dominance. <laughs> <laughs> nice. As long as we all understand that. Okay. <laughs> so she lit a torch before she went down? Yeah. So we can kind of look down and see what, what mm-hmm. she's seen? Okay. What do we see? How far down is it? The shaft seems to uh, descend about uh, five meters down, and you see that uh, she has uh, reached the reached the bottom and appears to be standing on like a like a beaten earth floor and is uh, picking up some silver coins that somebody so <laughs> rudely threw down <laughs> threw down the shaft. Uh, you see the torch move to indicate uh, that it's it's clear it's clear to follow. All right, I'll get on the rope and clumsily inch my way down. Okay. Kind of uh, making little quacky noises with every like time I have to like bend my legs. <laughs> Each of you will have to make a mobility roll oh, to safely no. oh, safely no. descend. <laughs> but the rope will give you a, a bonus, so you'll you'll roll two d okay. twenties and take the higher. Well, that just cancels out my bane on mobility, okay. so I just have a straight. <laughs> Let's see what happens. I'm watching McCander, I'll idly mention that. Oh. Oh, is, what do you? <laughs> suppose the odds of our wolfkin friend speaking goblin are <laughs> whoa nice uh, pretty high pretty high tender the tender failed i fell or something i i failed <laughs> it was an 11 and i have a 10 i don't think our conversation even broke when he hit the ground you're like bam and i'm like yeah no i'm pretty sure it's goblin <laughs> <laughs> So we get to uh, try some some new mechanics here. <laughs> yes. Ooh, falling damage. Aren't I lucky? D6 uh, bludgeoning damage for each meter after the first three. We're talking about five yeah. meters. So yeah, you're two. Uh, so that'll be two D6 bludgeoning damage for hitting the uh, ground. Okay, so that's seven. And uh, yeah, I don't think you're because it's bludgeoning. I don't think your armor is gonna. Oh, armor yeah, does not does. protect you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. From the falling. All right, yes. Yeah, so seven. Seven. <laughs> seven falling. And the halfling uh, rushes to uh, assist you to help help you get up, and and also uh, gives you a, a very understandable gesture of of quiet. So she puts her finger to her lips for you to be quiet, and points over to the corner. So once you uh, hit the bottom, you see that you're in a kind of domed antechamber. The floor is just kind of beaten earth. There's darkness around you. So the very edges of the, the dome, you don't quite see from how the uh, where the torch light reaches. That's a cha- chamber you've descended yeah. into. Uh, you're basically almost I- exactly in the center. So she helps you up and gestures you to be quiet. So try, start, try to stop the, the rattling of your plate mail and indicates uh, something in the uh, upper northwest corner of the chamber. So would the other party members like to attempt their descent? I'll gesture. Go ahead. Oh, Adelhan, you're you're too kind. Sure. It was advantage, so you you safely descend. Amazingly gracefully. When Orla gets down, I'll be like, how did you do that? She clearly greased the thing. And our our wizard. All right. Okay. 
That's a six. I think that's under my... Mobility is an eight. So yeah, you safely descend. So only a uh, the rattling <laughs> play and rail duck made a, a rough descent. Okay. So has anybody else, uh, or will anybody else, light a torch or anything? Or will you rely on... Uh... I'll light my torch off of her torch. Having finished my plummet, I'm going to draw my axe and heft up my shield. Now, so now that you have a, a couple of torches, you, you can the light is reaching a bit further, and you can see where where Kasana has uh, indicated in the corner of the room, you see some strange, kind of a strange clump of small, small-ish kind of black forms are wriggling against the uh, top of the antechamber, and it appears to be a cauldron of bats that have nested right inside the chamber itself. So moving from this point, you'll need to uh, do some sneaking if you want to get past them unnoticed. But what you do also see right directly to the north of the antechamber is a, an oaken door. So there's an, a door on the north wall. Uh, it's a double a double oak door with iron fittings. Stretching across both of the doors, both of the double doors is a, uh, a silver symbol. The doors themselves are flanked by statues of knights in an antiquated armor. So ancient uh, dragon, dragon kingdom armor, uh, but there's, they uh, are statues. Well. And the oaken door is closed, correct? You'll have to go up to it. You'll have to kind of uh, get closer. You can't quite tell from this distance. I'd like to look at the statues. Do you want me to escort you up there, wizard? Uh, sure. So I will very poorly attempt to sneak. You can actually get uh, assistance, so um, the wizard can can give you some uh, <laughs> plate <laughs> plate mail quieting advice. Because my plate gives me a so we'll, can, we'll cancel that out with the, uh, yeah, just a straight so just roll. A regular. Oh, no. Oh, that's a big fail. Kind of want to get angry, but I... Try as you might, your uh, plate mail does seem to make quite a bit of noise, and you notice... Th- it's the waddling. The waddling makes squeaks. <laughs> And you notice that that cluster of uh, kind of roiling black shapes uh, starts to fall away from the uh, the side of the uh, antechamber. And so you did successfully move, so you can put yourselves uh, up closer to the statues. But then you see that uh, this roiling uh, cauldron of uh, what appear to be vampire bats have now awakened, <laughs> now awakened, <laughs> and they are chatteringly, phonetically, and uh, uh, swarming towards Macander, the source of the noise. <laughs> I guess we can we should roll initiative because uh this is going to be bat attacks you want to just do a d10 for that d10 there's no other there's no other way to draw cards so yeah everyone just roll a d10 oh that's gonna be a one damn it yes Yes. yeah one goes first yeah yeah one goes first yeah all right wow so that's a don't, don't worry, Macander. I can I can be less on the ball than you. <laughs> All right. So um, the, the bats get three three rounds. So we'll put yeah we'll put the bats Whoa. at the last position, uh, bumping Orla up to nine, Macander up to eight, and then seven is bats. <laughs> and before everybody goes, there's bats. Okay, bats, bats, and more bats. <laughs> All right. What now appears to be almost a cloud of uh, shrieking bats descends. And first, first, of course, they're attracted to the uh, the source of the sound, which is which is our duck knight. <laughs> they approach quite quickly, and the first thing that happens is the bats start to uh, to swirl around uh, Macander in a frenzy. And and any characters, he will be the uh, the source of the attack. But anyone within ten meters needs to roll a willpower test against fear. <laughs> Yeah, that might hit Two, all the players. Oh, yeah, except Not for the MP. Yeah, right. Hits all the players. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Just Kasana is safe. Yeah, so everybody roll uh, your willpower. Oh. Nailed it. Ooh, just just got under there. You, oh, yeah, you, you can, can you, push. You can push. Oh, yeah, I think I should. Um, did you roll a uh, 20? Yeah, I can't push 20, huh? Can you do a, uh, give us a D8 roll, wizard? Absolutely. How's a six sound? So your fear turns to anger. And you are forced <laughs> forced to attack uh, the source on your next turn in melee combat. And you also <laughs> you oh. you also <laughs> you've given into your hatred. You also gain the um, condition angry. Angry. Yeah. So that'll be yeah. I guess against intelligence, you'll have a uh, a bane. Oh no. Oh. All right. So that was uh, yeah. So that was bats. And now it's your yeah. It's your turn. So the uh, the round round begins, and the the wizard is. Yeah, it has to do yes, melee? Yeah. yeah, that's too <laughs> it bad. It says your rage, yeah. <laughs> you're forced to attack at source your next turn in melee combat if possible. I think it's possible. It is possible. Though I am holding a torch, so I guess I'm swinging a torch at him. Yeah, that might be a, a better uh, <laughs> thing to do. 
So is that blunt weapons still, hopefully? A bludgeoning weapon, so yeah, you would roll your your blunt. Uh, that's that's the one I'm okay at. All right. <sighs> oh, very Whew. good. All right. Oh, all right. That that's a hit. a hit. And so that is a, uh, a D8 bludgeoning damage, and the bat, of course, are not wearing armor. So that was good. So yeah, give us. Well, you can't read it very well. That's a four. All right. So the bats take four yeah. damage. You see about a quarter of the bats uh, uh, fried and uh, scattering away from the, the swing of the torch. And so you, your uh, senses uh, start to return to you. You're, you're still a bit angered, but your, your attack frenzy has, uh, has left. So you, you aren't... Uh, Kill them! Kill them! Have to keep attacking in melee. <laughs> now you still see in battle list from the wizards. But now... The bats return. Okay, so mass attack. So the uh, bats begin to split up and attack all of the characters within 10 meters. And and so the monster attacks are successfully hit. So everyone uh, will suffer. And I'll just roll this once. Everyone will su- suffer slashing attacks from this uh, split horde of bats. Can I use my protect? Oh, sure. Ability? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yay. So I'm going to spend three willpower to draw the attack on the wizard to me. Your armor... The attack hits, but I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, there's no roll for monster attacks. They automatically hit every time. Right. You guys can uh, decide if you want to parry or dodge, and like Macandra is going to do the protector. Protector. Right. Okay, so you spend three. Yeah, it's a free oh, is thing it? oh, okay, good. I can okay. do. I mean, it costs three willpower, but it doesn't count as an action. Free action. Are you going to try to defend against it? No, I'm going to risk it this round so I can mm, try to nice. kill some bats. Mm. So you're defending the wizard, so uh, you draw. Yeah, you. Dr- so the wizard doesn't take yeah, any damage, yeah. and you're, you're going to take two of those attacks but your armor yeah six points of armor you're gonna only take two two points of damage unless you want to uh parry you could do that but you will be giving up your turn yeah i'll just i'll just take the damage it puts me at eight and how about uh orla do you want to either try to parry with a weapon or uh dodge the uh the seven points of bat attack which i shouldn't have rolled yet <laughs> seven oh but Orla has oh Orla has leather, so um, it will only be six. Yeah, that your leather will reduce it to six. Holy <laughs> <laughs> well, six! Comes way down to six. <laughs> yeah. You should get yourself a duck. <laughs> it works well. Protection. Duck. Stand by the duck. I'll protect you. Um, Could use your 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 well, knife, your knife, or just your mobility to uh, try to get out of the way. Oh, but I'm sorry, but it will um, it will be your action. It try. will be your action for this round. Well, let's let's okay. try to use my mobility. So it's a D20. Row, row below, your, row below. Uh, your mobility score. If you are successful, then you get out of the way, but you are prone. You will be, yeah, you will be prone. Okay. Well, let's try. Ability 14. Looks pretty good then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. Wow. So you are very, yes, very successful. So you dodge away, a, a successful dodge, so you don't take any damage and you are not prone. You can also move two meters. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, move. You can move a square in any direction if you want to get. A get little. out. Yeah. Yeah. We will scoop. There you go. Uh, Chrisanna didn't get into. Let's put her. She's climbing back up the rope. Yeah. <laughs> Taking her silver <laughs> and getting out of here. So after that attack, let's slot her in there. So she will actually move up and with her throwing knives. So she'll do a piercing attack of four. So she successfully hits the bats are going to take another two damage. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me roll uh, one more d6, too. She had would have had a d6. That was another four damage from the knife attack. Mikanda, that was a free action, so you you, you have your you have your action this round. Mikanda's going to yell something about featherless flying demons and swing his battle axe through the cloud of bats. Got him! Just normal damage. Oh, yeah, with your battle axe? Yeah, normal, normal damage. Two d8 plus a die four. I did 11. It appears that a vast majority, so it looks very sparse. There's just a, f- a few lingering bats left in uh, what used to be this uh, roiling cauldron of horrible bat wings. So most of them have now fallen dead to the ground. So there's just a few left, but they do get one more attack this round. <laughs> the remaining bats focus their uh, attack on the player that, that has the highest constitution. <laughs> That'd be McCander. I got a 16. So the bats saw you playing hero and decided they're not going to put up with that anymore. <laughs> they swarm you. The remaining ones swarm you with uh, uh, slashing their claws and do seven damage, but that's not going to, that's only going to give you a point through your armor. Only? You know, you're, I fell down a hole, you know. <laughs> well, one more point of damage because um, your armor yeah. stops the first six. Okay. And you will need to roll a willpower to resist fear oh. because you're surrounded by bats. 
Whew. Yeah, so you, t- you just take a point of damage and resist uh, the rest of what's going on. Yeah, the dwindling cloud of bats, they're still there, so they're still airborne, so we'll have to roll initiative again. Oh, uh, oh. eight. <laughs> All right. Oof. Oh, the halfling, thank you. Yeah, so here's here's the halfling. Oh, two. Come on, fast halfling. <gasps> oh, yeah. Then we've got bats to slot in here. They're so low. Let's cut the attack zone to just one this round. So the halfling will go... F- first and then okay so orla will be next all right so the halfling again throwing <laughs> throwing knives into the dark oh no but oh but she is not seeing as clearly i guess there are fewer bats to actually hit so the mass isn't quite a target yeah it was just a wall before it was impossible yeah. to miss now she actually has uh, so her knives uh yeah careen directly uh, through the remaining bats the knife embeds into the wall so the Bats are now going to swirl, and this time, so they're do, they're doing the um, the frenzy attack. So everyone will have to, uh, within ten meters of the bats, will have to make another willpower check. You're right, yeah, because it's two meter squares. Yeah. <laughs> so a five square radius, so most of the chamber. So we're doing yeah. willpower. Yes. Poo made it. I also made it. I I tied my stat. That works. That works? Okay. The remaining bats are not not nearly as formidable or frightening. We're not afraid of you bats. (laughs) You all resist fear, and it's now uh, Orla's turn. Shoot him in the face. Tell our our thief friend to duck and fire an arrow from my longbow over her head. Does Matt get confused and think you're talking to him? (laughs) Duck! (laughs) I get it. I get it. Additional D6. Oh, yes. The arrow finds its mark, and the remaining bats are skewered against the uh, the wall of the antechamber. And that is it. Yeah, there is no more. You just kebab like three bats. That's awesome. <laughs> yes, one, one arrow finishes off them. <laughs> no more movement, and the, the earth and ground is just littered with the corpses of hideous vampire bats. But you are near the doors now, and you can see that the doors have been pried open. The, those oak, oaken double doors have been pried open. And there's also, if anyone wants to roll learning, the, the symbol in silver that spans across both of the doors, if you want to try to see if you if you recognize that. Of course. <laughs> I totally know what that is. Nope. Push. Oh, I have disadvantage anyways, oh, right? Oh, that's right. I had a bane, so it's even worse. So does anybody else want to take a look? Orla, what you're learning? Uh, six. Oh. I, I, I suppose I would look more out of, <laughs> out of right, curiosity right. than anything else. Take a peek. Uh, no. Well, I mean, I can yeah. look. I got. I have learning. Uh, I read a book. Yeah. I made it. Excellent. Okay, so the silver symbol that stretches across both doors appears to be a stylized crown. The crown. Yes, from the ancient times uh, when the Misty Vale was ruled by a mighty dragon worshipping kingdom. So this appears to be the yeah the symbol of the dragon emperor. So you're on the right track. Is there anything else you want to do in this chamber? So the door is uh, slightly ajar, and so uh, you you can very easily proceed through, uh, or you can examine the chamber. Yeah, I'm going to suggest that the thief examine the the statues and the area of the door. Oh, okay. J- just so we're not surprised by anything. Sure. You gesture to. Uh, gestures affirmative. <laughs> I, say, I say it out loud and count on the wizard to translate. <laughs> Still a little embarrassed from that bad sneaking roll. The uh, statues themselves, there's nothing uh, unusual about the statues or the door. Uh, Chrisanna easily moves the door apart and you know is examining it carefully as she does so. Nothing happens. Uh, the door yeah, opens easily into the uh, the next chamber, and as she's carrying a torch, you can see. So as as the door opens and the light of her torch spreads into the uh, chamber, you see uh, the tunnels, the mound tunnels that uh, appear to run uh, both east and west from this point. Dark and damp tunnels through packed earth branch in two different directions. The air is is chilly and smells very musty, and the whole chamber itself smells of old of ancient decay there are slithering roots and worms centipedes are hanging like stalactites from the ceiling the ground is a bit slippery centipedes are hanging from the ceiling just regular sized ones nothing nothing Uh, nothing abnormally large yeah but you're definitely in an earthen in just a a shaped earthen tunnel and ahead of you as well you can see that the chamber directly north of you opens opens out so there's a tunnel that runs east and west but you can also walk directly ahead she leans back through the door and indicates it all clear. 
that you're safe to proceed. Anything else you want to do in the antechamber before you leave? I'll look Macander over because he has fallen and been attacked by bats and a bunch of other He's stuff. Beat, I'm beat to hell. There's not any. There's not really anything I can do, right, to help him. But okay. you can if you choose. Uh, it seems like in this antechamber, and you're able to close the doors. You could secure the doors. Uh, you would be able to uh, rest a shift if you'd like to do that, which would give. Uh, Everybody, D6 healing. Well, the stretch rest. Take a take a quick stretch. I think I think that's exactly what to do. I'm gonna uh, very aggressively at Chrisana tell her to come back in the room and close the door with the little hand signals. And like basically, I'm because I have the angry condition. I'm just gonna berate McAnder over what what all the mistakes he's made and all the damage he's taken, and tell him he needs to do better and quit quit getting roughed up. And basically, I'm just gonna manhandle him into sitting down and drinking water and you know chill right, out. Well, I'll stubbornly do that over here because now I'm mad. <laughs> being scolded by a dumb human <laughs> i'll be over here a stretch rest so about 15 minutes and it will give you uh d6 hit points back if someone attends you so if someone attends our duck knight uh it'll be 2d6 but that person won't will not be able to benefit from the rest oh i i, I can do that i i've not lost any hit points and so orla attends you're not uh, angry attends, <laughs> <laughs> candor. yeah so someone tends you and rolls healing. Oh, I'm just totally over here poking through these bats on that rest. I'm pissed. Okay, yeah, so if the wizard wants to roll uh, a spot hidden. Oh. Wizards like collecting guano. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so Orlo roll, sure, roll your healing do. and um, spot hidden for the wizard. And just relax, McKint. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, what do you know? I matched my healing skill. Oh, yeah, sweet. so 2d6. So uh, Matt, go ahead and roll 2d6 to recover. Three. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled a 20 oh, on no. that spot hit, so. <laughs> oh, no. Do you get any willpower in a stretch rest? I think it's a d6 both. Is it 2d6 because of Orla or just 1d6 because of willpower? It's 2d6 willpower recovery. Yeah, so just the regular stretch rest. Ooh, got all my willpower back. You can lose one condition, anybody that's still angry or... Uh, that's the wizard. wizard. That's right. All right, so yep. yeah, you're no longer angered after poking around in the bat carcasses. A very relaxing activity. <laughs> yes. Well, I, I, th I imagine I'm like piling them up and nice. burning them with a torch or something. I'm just angry at those damn bats. <laughs> nice. Orla is tending to me. I'm just going to keep repeating my theory that the halfling greased her. <laughs> Chrisanna didn't take any damage, so she's yeah she's been looking around the chamber as well. She she returns to the wizard, mm -hmm. raises in her hand. You see a uh, a curved goblin dagger. It appears the blade appears to. Uh, have been dipped in some sort of liquid, some kind of dark liquid, and she uh, she offers this uh, offers this to the wizard as uh, something that she recovered from from the floor. So do you do you accept this, or what are you gonna? Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll I'll take the dagger and and I'll flip her another silver coin. She smiles and gives you a uh, uh, an affirmative gesture. This dagger obviously is a, a remnants of uh, goblins that were here. You also see uh, this wouldn't be anything you'd, you'd need to spot, but um, as you were as you were poking through the bats, you definitely the bat carcasses. You definitely notice there's a lot of uh, footprints of the smaller footprints, goblin-sized footprints that you saw in the in the grass on the top of the dome, and also some drag marks are seen in the uh, the dirt floor. Oh, hmm. they took something away. Maybe the bats killed one of them. Probably. <laughs> Yeah. They almost killed their duck. <laughs> I'll proffer Orla the, the dagger and say, I know this is a foul goblin dagger, but it appears to have some type of poison on it. If you run anything else, it may be useful. You're more likely to hit with it. The goblins are a detestable lot, but I'll gladly use their poisons if we find some. The party is rested for a stretch, and I'm going to need uh, Macander to roll a d12. Oh, no. <laughs> He's got a case of vampirism. I rolled a 12. <laughs> so as you are... Uh, resting oh oh this is interesting though okay so let's uh let's just rewind just a little bit um what, what condition are the doors in like what what's what is the uh situation of the uh the oaken doors so you close them did you secure them in any way i don't think i don't think we did i think we just closed them and assumed that if anything opened them we would know i didn't, wasn't thinking we were spiking them or anything this is our like first that. barrel <laughs> i think that that makes sense so, so you hear in that the tunnels that you previously that you that Chrisanna was examining, you hear the clanking of uh, plate mail and the dragging of uh, you, you just hear metal on on metal and clanking sound, and it comes uh, it it uh, grows closer and you can hear through the door that it grows closer and that it approaches 
the door itself, but then slowly uh, sounds like it begins to retreat. The chamber seems to grow colder, and you have a, a strange sense of um, you know, some, some sort of menace. And uh, this, this clanking metal sound begins to uh, retreat, and uh, it sounds like it retreats uh, toward the east from the sound that you can hear through the door. I'll share a glance with Chrisanna and just be like, oh. Yeah, she appears to be very, very worried. Yeah, but the door itself, uh, nothing happened to the door, and it remained closed. I'll sign to her, don't wander far. This happened like towards the end of our stretch rest. At the end of your rest, so you re- yeah you receive full full benefits from the rest, and right as you're about to uh, return, hear something uh, approaching approaching the door, and then uh, uh, receding away. This very strange uh, metallic clinking sound. I'm gonna walk over to them and say, uh, "Little thief, can you peek around the corner?" So you want to open the door? Yeah, kind of look if she can sneak out and look down the hall. And- Tell us if she sees anything. <laughs> With a very worried expression, Chrysanna slowly opens the oaken doors and, and kind of squeezes it as small as possible. Uh, and she squeezes through. She's gone for just a moment and then returns and uh, basically shaking her head. No, you know, the, there's nothing that the, she gestures at the hallway is clear. Did the cold sensation leave with the, the, the metal sound left? Yes, it did. Was it actually cold or was it more like terror that we were feeling? Like it was hard to tell. You both had it was both a feeling of fear, but also it felt like the room actually got a little bit physically colder. So the question is, if it went to the east, do we want to try to track it down, or do we want to just go the other way for now? Yeah, I say we go the other way. You also have a chamber uh, directly to the north. Oh yeah, Did, could she see anything in there when she went out? So she gestures that there is a small room to the north. Seems to be a little bit of light coming from the far wall of that chamber. She didn't enter. She just peeking around the corner, kind of. There's a, a dim source of light coming from the uh, the far wall of that chamber, and there there isn't any light from either end of the uh, the tunnels, either the east or west direction. There's nothing. Check that way first. Then there's probably somebody or something in there. So if you proceed to the north, she leads everybody uh, towards this chamber. And, and as she's going, she's kind of signaling that everything is clear. She hasn't detected any traps or anything, any creatures or anything strange. So what you approach is a much smaller chamber than the antechamber you descended into. But it's a small room of the same sort of uh, beaten earth, much cleaner, more finished than the uh, the tunnels themselves. And there's a flickering light, the, uh, the, the north end of the um, chamber, there's a flickering light that's coming through a black iron uh, portcullis. So the, the north is actually barred by a metal gate on the far wall. And on either side of the metal gate are two mummified guards that appear to be wearing uh, chainmail with long spears. They uh, flank flank the portcullis entrance, and the flickering light that she notices coming coming from whatever is on the other side of the portcullis. Mummified. Unlike the statues that you saw before, these do appear to be actual guards that uh, are mummified bodies of guards, and the uh, armor that that they're wearing themselves is is quite rusted. It's quite it looks quite uh, corroded. I'll signal to her to step out and let Mikander take a look. Because the wizard duck <laughs> behind me. <laughs> yeah. So, Mikander, are you, you're going to examine the uh, the guards? Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll hef- heft up the shield and axe and uh, just come and look at one of them. As you approach one of the guards, maybe just prodding, you know, with the uh, the edge of your uh, uh, battle axe, you see that the uh, the, the rusty chainmail that they're wearing just just crumbles. It's uh, almost completely corroded, so it crumbles to dust if you make any contact with it. But both of them are equipped uh, with long spears, two-handed long spears that appear to be oh, wizard. appear to be in, in good uh, in good condition. It's safe. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> McKendra's gonna like think he heard something once about beheading dead things and try to behead one of them. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So you swing your you're gonna swing your battle axe at one of the. Uh, mm-hmm. The head easily falls off. The helmeted head, you know, easily falls off of the uh, the guard itself, and the uh, uh, rusty helmet uh, just seems to contain the uh, the mummified head. It doesn't actually roll out, but it just uh, it just flops. Uh, Towards the wall of the uh, the room that you're in, and there's no movement, no no response. The guard, the bodies of the guards, yeah, just completely roaming. It's safe. <laughs> completely. I'll whisper, yell at him. <laughs> Be quiet. Stop doing that. I'm gonna kind of roll the spear towards him. Like use this. <laughs> 
the gate behind them does is it like a portcullis is like something that drops down yes yeah it looks like um yeah it looks like a a door that would actually um you would raise up it's very rusted uh just like the the armor of the guards but it's uh it's barred completely and it looked impossible to open there is a uh, a keyhole but it seems uh seems so corroded that it it, even if you had the key it may not do anything the mighty duck knight pull it up you um probably couldn't it, because the mechanism doesn't appear like it would work you would have to uh, uh batter if you either through spells or uh physical physical damage you could probably work your way uh, through the rusted uh I'll, I'll put my hand on his shoulder as soon as he starts like looking like he's gonna beat on it or whatever it is and be like we'll come back to this once we know what that dragon noise was <laughs> okay and there is a in in the small in the small gaps of the the door itself. You do see a dim light flickering, and it seems to be like flickering torchlight. It's brighter, it's brighter than candles, but it seems to be uh, something is is lit on the other side. When I walk by, back out to the middle, and, but while I'm walking by, I suggest the little quiet one search the mummies. Chrisanna examines first the headless, <laughs> the headless guard, and then the other guard. Uh, she collects uh, both of the spears and offers them as uh, they appear to be uh, completely uh, operable. You know that they, they they would function very well. They're not damaged or corroded. I'm not really good with like pointy objects, so I'll kind of I'll proffer it to Orla and Mekander and see I if they have two weapons. Uh, I'm good, Mekander. All right, Mekander. Orla. Oh no, 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 thank you. I'm full. <laughs> Patty in the belly. Mm. I guess I'll take them with us for now. I mean, I look ridiculous. <laughs> You're just like walking with like, two long spears. <laughs> I have two long spears now. Yeah, like and yeah, two long spears. Now. Yeah, I think I'm. They may come in useful. <laughs> they may come in useful yet. I'll fill those in on your uh, offhand, kind of you know, strapped to your back. Mm-hmm. And you said they're st- they're still pretty good quality. They're not corroded at all, uh, so they seem to be made of some kind of different metal, much better than the uh, the chainmail. So they're not they're not corroded and uh, seem to oh. still be sharp and everything. I'll have to check these out in the future. Because they are strapped to your back, if you wanted to use them, you'd have to spend an action to to get them at hand. Right. No worries. <laughs> I'm not going to be swinging spears at anything. So yeah, you have yeah rusted door, and then you also have the t- the tunnel that the tunnels that lead both east and west. Are you char- are you waddling down the path? Tell me, tell me not to make noise. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so McCander, McCander, oh god, boldly, boldly steps over to the uh, uh, west <laughs> west side. I'm slower than everyone else, so you know. <laughs> Chrisanne is very worried, quietly but very quickly. Yeah, tries to move. Uh, <laughs> move towards you to make sure you don't and the wizard's leaving or something (laughs) (laughs) i'm keeping an eye down the the passage of the from the and even though i have a torch in my hand i feel like if i'm hiding behind a wall (laughs) i feel safer so the chamber that uh, mccander starts to walk into is a uh, a dark and damp chamber again with an earthen floor there are uh dugout burial niches in uh the walls so the, the walls themselves are just covered with these dug out niches. At one time, we're containing caskets, simple caskets. They have now obviously all been uh, dragged out. So this was some sort of crypt. All of the caskets are um, are scattered, are, are, are broken open and scattered. And along the floor are broken skeletons, m- moldering rags, shards of crushed pottery. Everything is, looks like it's been thoroughly looted. I'll kind of step in. So do we know anything about like this ancient civilization? Like why would there be, if this is where we think the crown is do they like bury the people with their subjects or something here well yeah if you want to do a um try do your learning and that that will probably help okay hey from what you can tell of the uh, the simplicity of the uh the coffins themselves the kind of meager meager possessions that were located it doesn't seem to be there's no there's no chests or anything it's just some simple broken pottery this appears to be the servants crypt the yeah the skeletons okay. and so any of the the rags or any of the um clothing that, that were on them was very simple um it wasn't uh it wasn't very luxurious it didn't look like they were of any sort of elevated class hmm I'll kind of poke around in the remains a little bit and see if I can, like, gather, like, if they were ceremonially, like, preserved or look like they were killed or if they were just servants that died and this is a place of honor for them. Orla, you want to maybe track? Oh, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Maybe. I I can guard you while you do it. (laughs) All right, yeah. Why not? Probably just spot hidden would work just as well, because scouting is kind of like a more preemptive, and we're, you're already in the room, unless you want to move further ahead or further down the other direction of the tunnel. 
Uh, you can roll scouting if you want, though. That might so either scouting or spot hidden, whichever is stronger, is fine. But I'm 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 a better scout than a hidden spotter. Yeah, give us a scouting roll. Oh well, <laughs> no. <laughs> it looks like um, there's been several uh, several groups of of tomb robbers uh, through here that have thoroughly torn apart. There isn't a single intact you know sarcophagus or anything. Everyone has been uh, everything has been dragged out and and smashed. Yeah, there's just and some of it's you know piled into the niches itself but it's just yeah it's just a mess it doesn't appear to be anything of value anybody else want to look around no I'm, i think i'm more interested in the bodies looking for tracks i'm or gonna anything. call for the small quiet one to look around the corner again to the north here so um yeah so chrisanna comes in to the north there is um another locked portcullis uh not as um uh, corroded as the other one Grisana points out she she makes a key a gesture for like a key opening a lock and points towards the door itself it does seem to have an intact lock but the um lock contains what looks like the uh the broken a broken key so someone attempted to use a key but broke it inside the lock mm-hmm. it's not able to be opened it looks like you could with force with force or magic, you could probably take it down, but uh, it's not going to open under regular regular means. Sooner or later, I'm going to have to make some noise, <laughs> wizard. All right. Well, I'll keep an eye down this way. You, uh, I'll look back the way we came. I guess get kicking on that door. All right. You know, uh, cartoonishly, Donald Duck. You know, make like I'm rolling up my sleeves, even though I'm wearing plate mail, <laughs> and then just start trying to batter down the the, the gate. Are you gonna swing? What are you? What are you gonna? Are you gonna do it? Put a shoulder into it, or use a weapon, uh, or a shield? What were you gonna? Ideally, I'm gonna put a shoulder into it if that's feasible. I don't really want to hit it with my axe, being that it's metal right, and right. everything. No bend bars roll, huh? Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> We'll give you your strength bonus. How about like a D8 and your strength bonus for just throwing your shoulder into the door? All right. Ooh. Five. So there's a horrible clang, and uh, you make a bit of a dent in the door, and it seems to, uh, if you kept at it, that you would make some progress. But as soon as you make that sound, the sound of your plate mill <laughs> stops reverberating <laughs> around in the walls of the chamber. You <laughs> you hear a small voice, a small terrified voice yelling, Stop! Stop! <laughs> where, where, where did that come it from? It appeared to be, it's somewhere from on the, uh, the west wall, <laughs> the west wall of the crypt. Oh, that's you, Orla. Yeah. I'll... <laughs> so, if you want to, you want to roll. Give us a, uh, I guess, just a, gen- a general spot hidden, and do it with advantage because you heard the direction of the of the voice. Uh. <laughs> but you can you can push it. Another, there's no twenties there, so you could push it and take become yeah, angry. Take, take a condition. Yeah, become angry or dirty or. You know, yeah. Th- there's a lot of debris here. I'll just <laughs> haphazardly okay. throw it around. Thus, thus making myself uh, good, good. unkempt. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. let's try this yeah, again. We can reroll both. There, there we, we go. go. That's better. With your extra effort that has yeah completely covered you in ancient corpse dust <laughs> and all sorts of uh, damn mess. <laughs> yes. So you're yeah you're very uh, <laughs> disheveled now, but you pinpointed the source of the voice and. You uncover a, a small cowering goblin that's just staring at you wide-eyed inside one of the niches. So you've pulled away all of the the debris that he had buried himself in, and now he's just staring at you in, in total fear. All right, Gobbo, tell us what you know. Go away, go away. He will come, he will come. And uh, he starts to, to try to climb out of the, uh, the niche and, and try to uh, kind of scurry around you. He appears to be terrified and that he's going to make a run for it. Who's coming? He will come. The night. The night. He killed all of us. The night is coming. Okay. All right, boys. <laughs> we got company. 